Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, EA released probably the best event outside of Team of the Year that we've gotten in Hockey Ultimate Team today with the Nations of Hockey event coinciding with the start of the actual Olympics. I'm not gonna lie, this is some of the best master set cards that you can come by and they're all pretty much amazing. So we're gonna get into that in the full event. Guys, if you enjoyed the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Just past 36,000 subs and let's get this video to like 500 likes. Hit that like button. All right, let's get into the video. All right, like we always do, we are going going to go over all of the current cards that have been released in this set. This is a two-week event, and we will get another set of Master Set players come next Friday as well for a total of 10. There's five absolute banger ones that have come out right now. So we've got six foot one Keith Yandel, 86 overall, with Workhorse as well as Light the Lamp and Bombarded, 89 speed, 91 acceleration. This is a great defenseman. Uh, for anyone that has just started out, you're, you made a holiday team. Uh, this is a great card for sure. A, just around 90 speed for defensemen. I did that defensive ranking video for non-master set players a few days ago, and this would fit right in there. Very, very good card, 86 overall. We also got what looks to be new superstar abilities with Shrug It Off. Reduces energy lost when hit, and the player is less likely to suffer winded get-ups. So I I have not seen that one yet, and it looks like we've got a new ability here in the 86 Keith Yandel. Then we've got the 86 Libor Hajek, 6'2", with Workhorse and Buzzing, as well as Wingman, 87 speed, 88 acceleration. This is probably a little too slow, in my opinion. Um, I think for being 6'2", doesn't have any ability that's really crazy outside of tape to tape, but again, I don't think tape to tape is really important on defensemen. Um, Defensive awareness is down at 86, so this is probably a pass for me. Then we've got the 87, Lucas Spiza, with Workhorse as well as Bombarded. And he's got Send It as his superstar ability. Again, not very good. 87 speed, 89 acceleration at 6'3". He's got good size. Um, however, it's going to cost you about 35,000 coins to get an 87 overall card, especially with how good this event is. Uh, but yeah, I would probably avoid this one. Again, I just think that... You need to try and get as close to 90 speed as possible at this point in the game because there are just so many fast players. Um, so it's going to be tough to utilize this guy. The 87 Jonas Corpusalo, six foot three, with silver post to post 80 or 90 speed. We've seen silver post to post be good. Gold is obviously the most effective. I'd probably avoid this one because of the cost of what 87s will be, but still not a bad card. The 88 Frank Hordler, six foot two with workhorse and bombarded, as well as shutdown, 89 speed, 91 acceleration. He's got six foot one and shutdown, which is great. Defensive awareness, though, is below 90, and as well as stick checking down 84. Probably not a good mix in all honesty, but he could be decently cheap for about 40,000 coins. I think that isn't a bad price given the state of defensemen outside of the expensive ones. Then we've got the 88 Valtteri, Phil Blow with Workhorse, as well as Fly the Zone and Spark, which is huge. And tape to tape, 88 speed, 88 acceleration. Just kind of ho-hum, though. I just don't think he's good enough um, in terms of his skating and size to play center. And probably you're not going to want to play an 88 speed skater down the wing at this point. So um, while Wings fans might want him, uh, just, I don't think that he's going to be worth the price tag. TJ Oshi gets an 89 with Spark as well as Magician. Could go with Distributor as well. So could get up to 93 speed or 93 acceleration, whatever one you want. 90 shooting. This is one of the better 89s in all honesty. Born Leader, if he is playing on, I mean, even if he's not, if he's playing on your top line, though, and you have Born Leader on, this is a great ability because of just being able to put out your first line yet again. Really, really good, well-rounded 89 overall card for sure in the TJ Oshie. Elias Pettersson gets a 90 overall. Again, I've not been a bit huge fan of Elias Pettersson cards because of just how slender he is. He gets bumped off the puck very easily. Uh, so I'm not a huge fan of this card. 90 acceleration, 91 speed. I'd much rather have the uh, TJ Oshie in all honesty i just think he's a little bit better elite edges is a great one but it's cost so much as the gold ability um so yeah i'm just not a huge fan of this one but i can see his shot being good and he is six foot two the 90 overall caden Gooley is a really nice left-handed defenseman he's got silver shutdown and gold truculence and he's got 90 speed with 92 acceleration um just a really nice all-around card again i think his abilities are great he's six foot three for anyone that is trying to find a decent top end left-handed defenseman like, if you can't afford Team of the Year, Headman or Bowmeister, those kind of cards, this is a great replacement for those. Then we've got the 91 Mark Shifley with Buzzing and Spark, as well as Thief. You're going to want to put Thief on him because of his face-off rating, but he's got gold quick draw and tape-to-tape. 
Um, he will have 90 speed, 92 acceleration. This is a really nice center card at six foot three uh, for 91 overall. He might be cheaper too because again, people just hate Mark Shifley cards. In all honesty, I don't know why. Um, but you know, he compares with like what Austin Matthews is right now. So people will pay a lot for him. Uh, I think that you could make out with a really really nice steal here if you can get him for a lot cheaper than what he's actually worth in the Mark Shifley. Paul Covey gets a big bump up to 92 with distributor as well as booming shot, 94 speed, 93 acceleration with seeing eye and in reverse. I wouldn't activate seeing eye on him, but the silver in reverse is pretty nice given his speed. Left-handed defenseman, not huge, but has decent body checking. I think that there's probably some better left-handed ones, especially in this event. And then I mentioned, like, I'd rather have Bo Meester than him or uh, the team builder Gonchar still. Uh, but after that, if you don't have those guys, this he fits in that top three for sure. Alex Ovechkin gets a 94 overall with workhorse and distributor. He's faster than what his stats indicate, but he has felt so sluggish, his X-Factor at 93. He's got Truculence, which is a better defensive uh, zone ability, but born leader on someone you play high in the lineup is great. His shot is maxed. His hand stats are basically maxed. Defensively, he's really good. It all is going to depend on your play style. If you need someone that can fly down the boards, this ain't it. But if you don't, uh, this is going to be a really good card. All right, on to the master items. And these things are insane. So we'll start with the 95 Essa Lindell, 6'3", workhorse, wingman, and distributor. Um, and you could go Spark to max out his body checking. 93 speed, 95 acceleration. Uh, again, defensively, he's got perfect sets. Then look at this zone ability combo. Shut Gold shutdown at 6'3 is great. Silver truculence, silver quick pick, silver ice pack, uh, which is advanced shot blocking ability with additional range. Greatly improves recovery from block shots and reduce injury for a stagger chance. Um, it's not really that big, to be honest with you, so you could probably avoid that one. But then he's also got bouncer, which is a great one, too, for defenseman. Just an absolute incredible card. One of the best left-handed defensemen. This is probably right behind Victor Hedman uh, for best left-handed defenseman in the game right now. Then we've got the 95 Robin Leonard, and my goodness, they just keep releasing a jacked-up goaltender every single event. We started with the 94 Carey Price, then we've got the Connor Hellebuck, then we had Pekka Rene, and now we've got Robin Leonard. I'm super big on not going after goaltenders for this exact reason, but goal post to post on 6'4 with 96 speed, as well as light work, silver light work. Like, this is still an incredible card. Like, if you don't have any of those, this is an awesome option. I would not go out and grab him, though. I just think there's going to be cheaper ones. I mean, honestly, you can probably go with the style icon carry price for much cheaper than this Leonard, and he's going to be just as good, in my opinion. Then we've got Dylan Larkin. Finally, Larkin gets a card, and it is a good one. Booming Shot Thief, as well as Gladiator instead of Bombarded. And my goodness, 97 speed, 97 acceleration, max agility, max endurance. His shot is in the high 90s. Hand stats are basically 99. Body checking's 95. And with Gladiator, it's 98. Defensively, he's got 99 defensive awareness, stick checking, and 93 faceoffs with Thief activated. Then he's got gold wheels. He's got silver quick draw, tape to tape, born leader, and elite edges. And I'm almost tempted to activate all of them once I get him. This is the best center in the game right now. Uh, he does, uh, one of the main questions is, is Ole Jokinen still worth it? Ole Jokinen is right behind Dylan Larkin in this, and I still think he is worth making while well before the event ends. That is one thing. Again, I'm going to get a lot of questions about that. Once Ole Jokinen's event ends and you have to make him for a more expensive price, I don't think he's worth it. So if you're deciding between the two, I would make Ole Jokinen this week and then, or right now, this weekend, and then try this way next week to make Dylan Larkin before he's onto the week. It's onto the week two master items. But this is an unbelievable card. And honestly, if you have like Duchesne, you could play Duchesne at center and Larkin on the wing with wheels and not activate quick draws just an all-around unbelievable card now we've got the 95 marion hosa wingman distributor and buzzing could also go booming shot but 95 speed 95 acceleration he's got gold born leader which is great silver wheels silver shutdown silver elite edges maxed wrist shot hand stats are a little all over the place but they're all in the 90s and then defensively he's got perfect stats the only thing the only knock on this card is that he can't play center so he's going to be a winger, and I'd probably rather have Larkin. So, like, if you're going to make Marion Hosa, you've got to make Larkin first because they're the same size, and Larkin's just an overall better card. Still unbelievable for a left-handed winger, though. Like, we've been waiting for just jacked-up left-handed wingers, and we're finally starting to get them right now. Then we've got the 95 Corbinian Holzer, and this thing is giving Brent Burns run for his money as best right-handed defenseman. And in all honesty, I think this is probably the best defenseman just quickly taking a look at him. I haven't used him yet. Gold Truculence, 
Silver shutdown, silver tape to tape. Um, those are great abilities. I mean, it probably wouldn't activate tape to tape on them, but shutdown and truculence is great. 93 speed, 95 acceleration. Uh, it's just an all around unbelievable stat combo. It's this event has just so many good cards to pick from, and there's going to be five more. All right, taking a look at sets, this works almost identically to the all star event. So, for the next few days, uh, it'll take seven collectibles uh, all the way up until next Friday to make one of the masters untradeable. That'll be the 86 version. You'll have to upgrade, and it is going to cost you quite a bit. Now, just doing the math on how much it's going to cost to upgrade them from making them all the way up to their final tier of 95 overall, it's going to cost you about 675,000 coins. Coins, but if you do the uh, event collectible way, you got to make sure that you get. So I, I've been mentioning this throughout the last few uh, events. Now you want to aim for seven thousand coins per collectible, and you can do the math on that. Like for example, if you go and look at like eighty six overalls, right? You'll get three collectibles. Do the math and see what eighty sixes are going for. Divide it by three, and you want to make sure it's under seven thousand. Anything under seven thousand is a good buy because that's usually where they settle in at, or a little bit more. If you make them all for uh, all the collectibles you'll need to get them all the way to ninety five. You're looking at 511,000 um, worth of coins if you were to use, you know, get your collectibles for under 75, 7,000 coins. So just keep that in mind, guys. But it is the exact same. There's no 90 overall. Uh, 89 is still the highest. So be on the lookout for 90, 91, and 92 overall cards because those tend to be cheaper because they're not used in sets yet. So be on the lookout for those. Another question I keep getting is, should I sell All-Star Larkin uh, to try and make the Master Set one? Yes, 1,000%. Because even if he wins the uh, fastest skater, he's going to have one more skating speed and acceleration. Um, not to mention, like, he is, uh, he'd have to win MVP to get up to 95. And even then, all of the abilities on the new Larkin are, are just better. So I would 100% sell Larkin before the All-Star game. Um, you know, and especially after once the skills competition happens, you know, he, he's, he's got a shot at it, but I would think it's going to be Connor McDavid. So, but again, guys, I will have a ranking of the five master set items. Uh, they are, you know, real quick, if you want it, uh, Larkin is the one that you have to make, but all of them are so good that there's going to be multiple. I think you should make in this event. And we're not even done the other five master items. So finally, EA has given us a great event. I'm excited for it. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good one.